Live from the spectacular Garden Roots in South Africa. We're streaming worldwide on eradiosa.com. Just after two o'clock, and uh, it's so nice to uh, welcome back uh, Travel Bug Rose to the airwaves uh, for the very first time in 2021. Rose, a very good afternoon to you. How's it going? It's going very well, and how are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, Happy New Year. It's a bit late now, but... (laughs) Happy New Year. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's always good to have a new year. Well, let's see. For me, it's just one day on to the next at the moment. So, yeah. yeah. But hopefully, it's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Take it one day at a time. Uh, like that country song. <laughs> it is. It's so true. Uh, how are you otherwise? How's wilderness today? Yeah, um, a couple of uh, misty days around. Mm. Uh, nice and rain. So, I, I do like the rain. It makes the forest. I've been in the forest for a couple of days, so it's been really nice. Um, I did a couple of earthing walks, uh, nice. which is one of the things that I do sometimes for people. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, must I carry <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's been, it's, been, it's been a good couple of days. Yeah, but as I said, I spent some time. I haven't been in the forest um, during season, of course, of uh, it being so busy. But I've spent uh, uh, yesterday. I was at Jubilee Creek, and today I was at the Woodville Tree. So it's been very nice. Yeah, nice. And today very you good. said nice. you, you specifically want to talk about the seven passes today. Yeah, well, I, th- I think about this. I've, yeah, I have spent a couple last couple of days in in the forest area, and we know that uh, the seven passes is actually one of the routes that people have been enjoying lately because of, of all the lockdown stuff. So, um, and we really like to encourage people to take the seven passes road because it's this nice and scenic route, and there's quite a lot of things to do on the on the seven passes outing day, especially if it's a little bit overcast and there's not much to you know, not not many places to go to. Um, to entertain children and etc etc so it could be slightly rainy sometimes or just overcast and yeah um very interesting about the seven passes shall i just carry on because we're gonna have to keep this short and sweet yes <laughs> i'm listening i'm all ears rose um, okay so the seven passes road was as we know was built in um uh oh, goodness gracious now i forgot it was built in in 18 started i think it was to finished in 1867 and it crosses 10 rivers and seven gorges and is 75 kilometers long and uh it's for some people well it says in some places but I, the the past was built started was started built being built by thomas bain and uh his brother-in-law which is adam de schmidt but because of a little fallout i think adam de schmidt is the person who actually finished the pay, the past road Ooh. and it was funny enough some people think it was started in george and finished in eisner but it was actually started in eisner and finished in george oh so the first part that they actually built was the phantom piece, the phantom pass piece and um if you are crossing from nisner white bridge uh, you will see the first turn off to the right is a gravel road, which is the Phantom Pass. And Phantom Pass is named after the moth, as we know, the Phantom Moth. Mm. And on that little piece of pass, there is quite uh, there's uh, uh, access to the, the drift, which is the river. And you can go down there to have a swim if you wish to. And uh, just a little bit further on, there's a little butchery, um, uh Charles, Charles, Charleston butchery. So now I've forgotten the name. But there's a little butchery there that you can actually access. And it's got a little deli and it's got divine things. And that will take us up to uh, the Renandal Road. And from there on, the the passes was is um, tarred. And on a good day between Thursday and Saturday and Sunday, you can actually stop in at Tati's, which is a nice little stop. Mm. As we know, it's like a little country farm kitchen and with a lovely um, setting of historical stuff. And it, it will also, is that there's a little bit further on is the turn off towards Bibby's Hook, which will take you into the Sandbox Hautfeld area, which is where they found the first gold in South Africa. Yeah. And the, the remnants of, uh, of the um, mine is still there, but it's not accessible at the moment. But you can visit Jubilee Creek, live little walk to the waterfall, or you can do the circles in the forest walk. And uh, you can see the Dalia Matia big tree there. Mm. Um, then if you get back onto the passes, then you cross over the Humtini Pass. And Humtini means, is actually the Khoi word for difficult. 
and you can see why it's quite a hectic pass that was built mm. um that will take you over the first stone bridge and the stone bridges were replaced in i think it was 1904 um by you know they were first timber bridges and they were uh, replaced by stone bridges then you'll pass over you'll cross over the Humtini river um and then you'll it will wind up towards um, Barrington and Barrington is an uh, interesting place there's a there's trees for Africa if you want to go and shop for trees and also it's got the garden route trail park which is owned by the Dormel family or Rob Dormel and if you got a bicycle it's a perfect place to get out your bicycle and to go and cycle some excellent single track routes on that in that little spot Mm. Yeah, and from there on, uh, you can you go over the Karatra River, and you carry on winding your way through the passes. Then eventually, you go over the To River, work across first. Um, you will also get to the little Karatra, which is the town you know, Karatra, the little town. Mm. Um, it's an interesting little town because it was the place where they dumped all the woodcutters, yeah. and. Uh, from they when, when they took them out of the forest so it's a, it's a interesting drive if you go on that pass just kind of turn right into Karatra and have a little drive through the town it's very quite um big little houses some of them are pretty some of them are not so pretty but it's got some nice history in there as well and then uh, as you like lo- go along the passes some beautiful scenic routes and you will eventually come out at uh, the top of um uh the setting of Hookville area which will take you down to Wart Hookville Hookville is not on the seven passes but it's li- a little bit just a little bit off the seven passes road and that is really nice for a stop over for a good cup of coffee or a little luncheon um and enjoy some of um, the famous cheesecake in the area you know and they they also say Hookwell is what the town for the best best cook could be hook so that is <laughs> that's quite enough oh dear <laughs> <laughs> you said it um, and then, yeah and then um, if you go well let's, I've been a little bit uh, fast but if you before you get to Hookwell on the seven passes you also get to the big woodwell tree which is the sand parks um big tree uh, at Nikoyela Wood over 800 years old so you're welcome to there's also a little circular route which I actually did this morning um and prolific at the moment is the mushrooms uh, just after the rain all the mushrooms are blooming and it's Ooh. really really it's only a 2 kilometer walk so it's very easy um and if you're doing things like me like barefoot walks you it's a lovely route to walk barefoot as well just take some mozzy stuff because the mozzies are rife when it just after it's rain <laughs> oh, i see mm. yeah yeah then if you go back on the seven passes which will uh, then take you over the tow river pass and then we'll take you all along the route there back into uh, until you reach wilderness heights And on the corner there at Wilderness Heights you will you will also find a small little tea garden which is the tea tea junction they call it which has also got a nursery a lovely little stop over there um if you're interested in and it's a really nice setting there I I, I really enjoy the tea junction Then you wind your way down the seven passes and this is the last little piece before you get into George and then you will get the Kaimans stop and you'll also find the Silver River stop um, and and uh, the Silver River is actually a place where you can park your car and you can actually walk down to the river um there's a little stair or a little walkway down there some people just go down there hop on the stones of the river uh it's really it's really refreshing as well if you are um doing a long drive and there's this place that you want to go cool down it's quite nice to stop over there and just go put your feet in the river and mm. then get back up Um then of course you're going to make your way towards George which will take you past Sarsfelt or uh, the old Sarsfelt which is now the NMU and on that in there is also um the Grunewalder walk and hikes and uh, or and also the hike to the Pepsi Pool so you just drive in there and ask for directions they will actually tell you where to go to and, and uh, yeah you can actually do so spend some time there in Grunewalder um routes or an you can hike to the Pepsi pools. And then of course you will take the road will eventually end up in George. 
and uh, yeah, that will is a good 75 kilometers of beautiful mountain foot settings. All the, the whole route is, is actually built on the path of elephants, mm. uh, which because elephants have the perfect el- equilibrium, and and it's a, just a lo- really lovely day out. So that's one of the passes that I always suggest for people to actually do in a day, and don't rush it. You know, take it mm. easy. Enjoy the scenic routes. There's a few places to stop where you can take some photographs. Um, maybe veer off the road a little bit to into another little sections. But that's definitely one of the passes that you should visit when you're in the garden root area. Fantastic. Yeah, that's my little. <laughs> That's my little king for today. Thanks, Rose. <laughs> just, just before I let you go, thanks for taking us down the uh, seven passes today. Um, I want to ask you, uh, do you get a lot of ghost hunters out in the Goatveld area? Because apparently it's quite haunted. I know that there's a ghost at the... Um, Is it Goatveld? Somewhere there. Yeah, Goatveld. I could imagine people would probably talk about ghosts but I've never heard of ghost stories it should be actually interesting to find out a few ghost stories in the area I know there's a ghost story of Montague Pass but I'll share that on the next occasion I think but next Montague week we'll Pass. talk about the ghosts because I know in Goatveld yeah. somewhere in Goatveld somebody was staying and, and they couldn't they didn't even last the night because of all the activity uh, in, in the area there Oh, uh, we'll talk about that next yeah, time. I think, Interesting. I think that's a, that, that's the hotel. I'll talk to be because I know about that ghost. It was uh, yeah. Oof, we'll I can't wait. It's me, my kind of thing. Let's talk about <laughs> it next week. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> Rose, thank you so much. As always, good to have you back. And then next Tuesday at two o'clock, we'll chat again for Travel Tuesday. Excellent. Thank you so much. In the meantime, have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. You too. Bye.